It's nice to see you. Thank you for being at Bible study today. We were in the Christie House Library uh, because we had some systems that set up issues up in the Great Hall. So it did um, cause a little more difficulty in hearing. I apologize for that, but I'm glad it, those of you that hung in there hung in there. We had a nice conversation. Uh, we looked at the book of Judges, which seemed to not be everyone's favorite book. Go figure. It is a, a, a story of the Israelites uh, coming in to the promised land. Joshua dies, and we see a uh, representation of leadership failure writ large. That's basically the idea. The reality is the people of Israel uh, were trying to stay together as a community and follow the word of God, and leaders heard the word of God and sought to rise in power and do what they thought God wanted them to do, which turned into a lot of murder. And then they, as they uh, assumed their power, they stayed in power and sometimes even killed their own people and ended up worshiping idols. We talked in the class about how we see that even today with powerful leaders around the world, how they start off as a leader for the people. I say this up work in Eritrea is a great example of this, and 30 years later is an absolute despot in his own country. And the cycle of getting power, having power, becoming corrupt, and then needing to maintain power so you don't go to jail. Uh, it's a, a well-worn cycle we see with the dictators around the world. Um, so uh, the cycle is the people of Israel, uh, theoretically, uh, as the book tells it, sin. Uh, they are uh, out of favor with God, which is what sin means, really, like not walking the path that God has put before us. They're out of relationship with God. Uh, another community comes in and it takes them over. They are repressed. They repent and promise to, to step back into relationship with God. And what does that mean? Well, we'll see what it means in the book of Ruth. So hold on, right? Step back into relationship with God. And they go to a leader, the leader uh, builds an army, the army pushes back against the people that are ruling over them, and there is peace in Israel for a period of time until the cycle starts again. Uh, uh, Othaniel is one of the judges, Ehud is one of the judges, Deborah is one of the judges, they're not bad judges, they uh, retake the land, consolidate, um, uh, and, and sort of let go of power once they've uh, created freedom for the people. Then we see Gideon. Gideon is very faithful to God, but then, right, as he attains power, he creates idols and even kills some of his fellow Israelites. Uh, holding on to power, he becomes incredibly corrupt. Then there's Jetheth uh, and, and the Amorites uh, and Samson, who is completely uh, about his own power and position and ends up mass murdering a whole bunch of people. Uh, that was sort of part of his MO. Now, the thing that's important to remember is that whoever the people were uh, in the power, the people that are being talked about here in the book of Judges, they turned to God and God was there. But because God was there, that doesn't necessarily mean that God endorses what they did. It only means the reality of God's presence. They interpreted it as God's affirmation of what they were doing, right, and uh, ended up uh, moving further and further away from God's hope for his people. And in the end, the book of Judges, it says, but those in Israel, uh, everyone that said, everyone did what was right in their own sight, which is completely the opposite of what we're called to do. We're supposed to do what is right within the sight of God. Which takes us then to the book of Ruth. In the book of Ruth, only twice is the name of God mentioned. And yet what we see in the book of Ruth is how one lives in the patterns of God. So we have Naomi, and there's a famine. She and her husband move to uh, Moab uh, with their two sons. The husband dies, the sons marry Moabite women, uh, the sons die. And Naomi, now a widow and old, decides she needs to go back and find somebody who can take care of her in Israel. Uh, one of the daughters-in-law uh, returns to her people, which is completely reasonable, but Naomi doesn't. 
And so then the question we asked is, why didn't Naomi return to her people? And it's because, or why Ruth didn't return to her people? It's because Naomi was an evangelist. Not an evangelist uh, trying to convince Ruth to do something, but Naomi was the kind of person that Ruth wanted to be like. She was the kind of person that Ruth wanted to be with. Where you go, I will go. Who your God is, my God is as well. What we see in this time of the judges, which is when Ruth happens, is we see people, uh, sort of humble people, loyal people, people walking in the patterns of God. One such person is Boaz. Boaz internally has internalized the, the good laws of the Hebrew people, uh, which we see in the manner by which he lets Ruth and others glean, right? That's right out of uh, Deuteronomy 24, verse 19. Um, and so he's living this righteous life, this good life, this life that God has called him to live. And Ruth is sent by Naomi to glean in the fields. And Boaz is generous. But he's also taken by Ruth. Why? How she looks, maybe. It says she's beautiful. But I think more importantly, the kind of person she is. Ruth is the kind of person who's like Naomi. And the interesting thing is she didn't have to be Jewish to do it. Right? That's something we learn about God's divine economy, God's patterns of living. It's about how we are human together, how we care for one another together. And so Ruth returns uh, to Boaz. She's spiffied up a little bit under the instruction of Naomi. And Boaz says, wow, this would be a wonderful person to grow in love with, he proposes. Turns out there's somebody else who has uh, redemption rights. That's the way in which people uh, cared for people in need. So if a, a brother dies and a widow is left, the other brother raises up that widow uh, to have children for his brother. So the text says, but the reality is it's really a way of caring for widows, right? That, that, that there's an obligation within the tribal and family structure for people to uh, care for those who, uh, like a widow or an orphan, as an example. So anyway, uh, this other person who has a, a redemption rights prior to Boaz doesn't want to have a Moabite wife. And Boaz knows that there's something more important than her ethnicity or her tribe. It is her loyalty that she showed to Naomi and it is her character. And she and so they get married and they have a child. Um, Perez, who has a child, Hezron, who has a child, Ram, who has a child, uh, Ob Binadab, who has a child, Solomon, who has a child, no, Boaz, and Boaz has a child that is Obed, and Obed has Jesse, and Jesse has David. And so Ruth the Moabite is rewarded by God for her loyalty to the patterns of how God wants us to live. And I believe that she knew that as soon as she got into the eternal presence of the Lord. When she was with God, she knew the blessing that God had done through her and her loyalty to Naomi and her relationship with Boaz. And so we have in the end contrasting stories. We have people who live a godly life, who do it internally, who do it humbly, who do it righteously. And then we have people like the judges who seek God to be the powerful God and to give them power and to be in control. And we see what that does to people. The story of judges is ugly, but it's important. Because it's even a story that happens today uh, for people in power. We also have the story of people like Ruth and Boaz and Naomi today. And those are the people that we seek to be, right? That we become habitually the kind of people who do the right thing, whether we're thinking about what we're doing or not. Like Naomi, like Ruth, like Boaz. Thank you for being in this conversation with me next week. We'll talk about Samuel, uh, book one and book two. Peace upon your souls.